Welcome to the Effortless Swimming Podcast. My guest today is uh, Holly Berkner, and Holly and I uh, have swum a little bit uh, when I was uh, living in regional Victoria. And the reason I've got Holly on is she just completed a 100 kilometer swim from Portsea to Port Melbourne, uh, which is in the bay here in Melbourne. She did that across five days. And uh, I was following your journey on, on Facebook, Holly, just uh, glad I wasn't in there, the one doing it, but uh, pretty inspired by what you did. So first of all, welcome and congratulations. Thank you so much for that. What I quite like about your swim is it was, it's very much a choose your own adventure. There was no um, set race. There was no, you know, there was nothing apart from you just decided to do it one day. What was that moment for you that you decided this was something that you wanted to go for? Um, when we were in the middle of quarantine lockdown last year, I was talking to my family and stuff like that. And we we're talking about a swim I did when I was like 16 down the river. And um. I get very, I'm a very competitive person and I almost got competitive with my old self. And I was like, wow, like 16 year old Holly was able to do this insane swim. I was like, surely I haven't peaked yet in my swimming. So I was like, no, nah, I have to do another swim. I was saying to dad, I was like, I am too competitive to let my younger self win. So I went to bed that night and I literally laid in my bed and I mapped out a swim in the bay. And I was like, hmm, let's see if I can get an extra 20 Ks to what I did when I was younger. So yeah, I was sitting in bed and I mapped out a plan. I woke up the next morning and I went to mom and dad and I was like, this is what I want to do. 100Ks in the bay. They kind of looked at me and were like, oh, <laughs> like maybe we should, you know, give you a couple of days to really think about if you want to do this. And um, I stuck it on the fridge and I was like, nope, this is what's going to happen <laughs> next year. We're doing it. <laughs> That's so good. And the, the swim that you did before, so it was, was it down the Murray? The yeah. Bottom? So it was from the Chuka Moama Bridge to Trumbury Weir. So it was 80 Ks, I pretty much followed like the Southern 80 course, the ski race. So we watched that for years and I was so used to that race that I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to swim the 80 Ks. <laughs> and the, across how many days was that? Cause I remember uh, when we were chatting you, the first day you went hard, you did a, you yeah. did a big swim that, that yeah. first day and paid for it. So we did that. it original plan was four days. And then I was like, no, nah, I can do this in three days. Like, we won't do four days. Um, so the first day was about 32 Ks or something like that. So we went, or maybe it was even a bit longer. So we went way longer than I probably should have. And I just smashed myself that first day. And I really paid for it the second day, especially because I also, um, we were camping along the side of the river and my mat, my sleeping mat went down. So I was sleeping on the hard ground that night and I was sunburned in my face because I forgot sunscreen and my arms were sore. I'd hop back in the water the next day. And I was like, oh, this is gonna, this is gonna be so bad. This is gonna hurt so much. <laughs> and how yeah. far did you do that second day? Uh, I think it was about 25 or so, because we made it the last day was gonna be the shortest. So I don't think we planned too well. We're like, oh, we'll go really long first day, medium second day, short third day. And the second day, I think was the hardest because I knew that I had to get in the water the next day after that. And I was like, far out, like, how are you going to do this? <laughs> this is going to hurt. What you, uh, did you take that idea to your mum and dad when you were 16? You said, I want to swim down. Yeah. I think I was actually like 14 and a half, 15. And I was like, this is, this is what I'm going to do. And um, yeah, of course they looked at me and they're like, sure thing. Like you're going to swim 80 Ks down the river. You're like 15 years old. <laughs> and, um, and I was like, no, nah, I'm going to do it. Like, there's no stopping me. Um, and then, yeah, I, we, I was meant to do it when I was 15, but there was floods and everything that hit the river. So we had to push it back later. And I was like, dad, I was like, oh no, like I'm going to be 16 now when I do it. It's not as cool. Like I want to be 15, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I still got it done. And I was, maybe I was happy that I was 16. Cause yeah, that hurt. <laughs> Yeah, well, look, I think of, um, I mean, your parents, um, I imagine, be really proud of that, especially at that age, doing something like that. And um, and then doing, having done the swim uh, a couple of weeks ago, the 100K swim. So they, it wasn't just you going out there and swimming by yourself for 20K a day. It was a quite a bit of a team effort. Um, do you want to talk a bit about what what was involved with, I guess, the, the safety and the feeding and, um, and the support that you had around you to help you yeah. complete the swim successfully? Yeah, I had a huge support team. So I had my mom and dad. So my dad was kind of like my nutrition man, my let's get in the water now. We're starting at sick, very lo like um, logistics kind of based. He was like, we're doing this amount of Ks these days. You're going to hop in at this time, hop out at this time. You'll feed them. My mom was very, 
more um, supportive in like she would, she's a masseuse. So she's done sport massage and everything like that. So she would rub down my shoulders each night, my back, um, get me, she does also Pilates. So she got me through Pilates movements to help stretch each night, um, each night. Um, and she also had a role in nutrition because she knows a lot about the amount of energy, like calories that I need, different things like that. Um, and then I had my two brothers and they were pretty much, their support was just making me laugh. Like they would, they would just say different things to me or like throw food at me in the water or just do something like that. They would just be like, like shake my head and laugh with them. Especially um, my brother, just younger than me, two years younger. He swam a lot with me. He did 10 Ks on the first day with me and he hadn't swum for weeks beforehand, but he was like, oh, I'll do 10 Ks with you the first day. So on, yeah, on the second day he hopped in, did 10 Ks with me and then um, we will singing songs together when we popped our head up to eight and he had spoonfuls of coconut um, oil because he thought it was tasting delicious. So just little things like that made me laugh. And then I also had my partner come along with me. He was like my emotional support, kind of like when I was breaking down, he was like, no, no, you can do this. Like, let's keep going. And I was like, oh, like, no, get me out of the water. This is a stupid idea. Like, why did I decide to do this? He was like, no, no, you can, you'll be fine. Get back in again. <laughs> so like, and then I also had um, Matt Alice who came along as well. And he was like, we wouldn't have been able to do it without him because he bought his jet ski and everything like that. And he was a swimmer with me and just another person that would make me laugh along the way. So as long as I had good company, good people to make me laugh, then it was going to be fine. So yeah, it was really a great group of support. <laughs> yeah, no. And the, the window that you chose um, was a, an interesting one because you just, it's kind of got a bit unlucky with the, the weather. And I remember um, when you said, oh, I'm going to be starting on the, um, what was it? The went yeah, the Wednesday. Um, and I looked at the the winds and and the, the weather and I saw it and went, wow, it's going to be interesting with these strong, yeah. really strong westerly winds and you're swimming sort of across it. Um, and it's just basically like onshore slop in the bay where it's, uh, it makes for very hard, a very hard slog. Um, now, so you planned for five days and uh, the, the fifth day was, well, on the coast, it was the biggest swell they'd had on a, in a decade. Um, now you're in the bay, so it's kind of protected from that, but it didn't mean that you're protected from the, the wind and the rain and everything else. So you had to um, rest on day five and then finish on day six. So um, how, how did the weather sort of eventuate for you across the week? And then um, what did it mean for your initial support boat and, uh, and a few other yeah. things along the way? Well, day one started off great. It was, we started like 6 a.m. in the morning, so it's still a little bit dark. It was so flat. Um, I could see the bottom. It was beautiful, clear water down near like Port Sorrento area. It's always beautiful. Um, and I was able to smash out 12 Ks in about three hours, just under three hours. So I was flying and then I finished day one and I was like, okay, like that was all right. The, the conditions were good. I was like, everything else will be fine. Um, then day two was the same. It was sunny. It was warm. We were swimming along comfortably. There was not much of a chop, like a little bit of one, but not too bad. And we got to the Mornington Pier where I was meant to finish on day two. My mum and dad were like, oh, maybe you should like swim a bit extra today. And I was like, why? Like, I'm, I'm here now. Like, I might as well just get out. They're like, oh, like the weather's not too good tomorrow. Maybe you should swim just like a little bit further. And I was like, oh. I was like, all right, I'll swim up to the other end of the beach and then I'll hop out from there. Because when I see my finish point, my mind like switches off and it's like, out time. Like, you're finished. Good job for the day. But I was like, okay, I'll get to the other side. And um. Yeah, then after day two, that's when everything started to go a bit downhill. Um, so we had a boat um, that was following me and because I was about a K or so off the beach. Um, so the boat is where I would have my lunch at, after three hours um, and then I'd hop back in the water again. So after at the end of day two, we were um, getting ready to go in and we're like, oh, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow morning. Like we're going to start here. And they're like, oh, no, nah, like, we're not going to turn up tomorrow and we're like oh what and they're like nah it's too windy like when does when do you want to start up again and I was like oh no I'm swimming tomorrow he was like he was like oh well we, we won't we won't be coming with you so when that got told to us mom and dad were like like oh my god like what do we do because they didn't really want to tell me they were just like we'll plan this without holy did you have the jet ski at the time yes yeah, so we had the jet ski for the I first few days yeah. Um, and that was the one that was the vessel pretty much that was like next to me the whole time, whereas the boat was a bit further in front. Um, and the jet ski would hand me my food on my hourly breaks. 
so yeah we were like oh like what are we going to do we have like x amount of people that are supporting me and I've got to come in or like get on land or a boat or something like that for my three-hour break to have food um so we're like oh, okay like we'll swim a little bit closer to shore we'll have a jet ski next to me and then we'll have land people we're like okay we can do that we'll figure this out um and we were I remember we were laying in the hotel room where we were staying each night and mum was massaging my arms and we had the news on and the weather came up for the next day and it was atrocious and I was like I was like someone needs to turn that off like I can't see that I need to just I need to be in my own head I was like I can't I don't want to see the weather I just want to know that I have to swim that's all I have to do I have to get from Mornington Pier which is where I was going to start the next day to Bond Beach which was about 20 k's and um yeah, so we woke up the next morning and we went down to the beach and I was standing there looking out and the water was so choppy. You could almost, um, yeah, you could almost body surf in that water. I was like, oh no, but my brother was great. He was like, we'll hop in together. And the good thing was it was a southwesterly. So there was like a little bit of a push towards the way I was heading. Um, so um, when I, before I hopped in, I my family is very supportive and stuff like that, but I think they'll being very realistic, looking at the conditions, looking at how far I have to swim and being like, oh, I don't know if you're going to make it. Like, we'll just try to get to Frankston, which was um, about going to be about the halfway point of that day and then see if you hit the Bomb Beach. And they were like, oh, like, I don't know if we're going to be able to make it. It's going to be very choppy. We might have to pull you out. And I think because I got all those things coming into my head, people like a boat person pulling out saying it's too windy, um different people in the support crew going oh it's a bit too windy we're not sure if we can do it I think in my head I was like you know what no I'm gonna prove you all wrong I'm gonna swim to Bond Beach that's where I have to get to I don't care what anyone else says to me I'm going to get to my finish point I don't care how long it takes me it can take me to 6 p.m but I'm gonna make it to Bond Beach that day and um it ended up being my quickest day I I got out of the water around one o'clock because I think in my head, I was just like, no, you can do this. Like, doesn't matter what's going to happen. You're going to swim there. And I got to Frankston. Dad was like, oh, okay. He's like, we can definitely get to Bond Beach. We're not too far now. And I was like, yep. See, told you I was going to get there. Like, not, what a breeze. <laughs> I think I know how to motivate you. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, I know. how if you I, can't do it. Yeah. If I got told that I can't do something, it's always been motivated to make me do it. Um, Literally, since I was like nine years old, and dad's like, no, you can't beat me in the pool. I'll be like, I can beat you now. Like, <laughs> you just watch me. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely always been a bit of a pusher when people kind of doubt me. I'm like, well, I'm going to show you that I can do it. Like, doesn't matter what's going to happen. Like, yeah, it's always going to make me get there no matter what. <clears throat> so, yeah, we finished day three. And I was like, oh, what a breeze. Like tomorrow's day four. And then the last day doesn't even count. In my head, I was thinking that. I was like, day four is the last hard day because day five, I can see the spirit of Tasmania where Port Melbourne is. I'm going to be able to get there easy peasy. Um, yeah, day four was, uh, I feel like the ocean gods were really testing me and decided to put me through hell. I, um, I woke up and we went down to Bomb Beach and the winds had changed to like a northwesterly. So I was getting smacked in the face. and. Um, the worst thing was is my nutrition was really bad I every time I got out of the ocean I just felt sick like all through the night I just couldn't eat anything which was really bad um I was in a massive calorie deficit could not get any food down me just didn't really feel like anything dad was like force feeding me peanut butter toast each morning I was like no like I'll have a slice like I don't want to eat anything um so when I hopped in on day four after previously th swimming three days not having heaps of food being tired um it was rainy that day really windy I think we had gusts of up to like 60 70k an hour gusts so it was white caps everywhere and every time I would turn to the side I'd just get a mouthful of um ocean water and I the day before it took me an hour to swim about four k's this day it took me an hour to swim just two k's because I was getting pushed oh. back every time I would get a bit further, I would get pushed back again. And I was looking at the shoreline and I popped my head up to my mum and dad on the jet ski. And I was like, am I moving anywhere? I was like, I don't think I've left Bomb Beach. I was like, I'm just getting pushed back. Every time I see a building, it takes me like 30 minutes to get past that one building. And I think because of that, it was getting really disheartening. And I was just like, I was swimming by myself. I was like, this is ridiculous. Um, so I got 5K done. 
and I put my head up and my my lips were blue I was freezing cold I couldn't heat myself up anymore um and mum and dad were like oh god like we're gonna have to take you in where you there's no way you can keep going like this so we went into the beach and we found some random life-saving club thing and they sat me in it grabbed a space blanket wrapped me up in it I couldn't like really undress myself properly because I was so cold I had hypothermia um and then I was sitting in that life saving club because it was just completely empty no one wants to be at the beach that day and I was just like having a full breakdown I was like I don't want to get back in the water I don't want to put my wetsuit on again like and I think it was more emotional because my like I knew in my head in the back of my mind I had to get in the water like mum and dad were like do we want to go home and I was like no 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 just give me five minutes I need to like break down then build myself back up again and then get in the water <laughs> yeah. so they had to warm me up they tried to get some food into me we went to a cafe stuff like that and then I was sitting in the corner of the cafe and everyone was talking and in my head all I could think was oh wow you have to get back in this water and swim another 15 k's like this is gonna take you oh, forever eh? yeah and it was, it was just like in my head I was like oh my god like how do you think you're gonna be able to do this um it's northwesterly there's white cats everywhere anyway and then I came up with the idea. I was like, dad, why don't we drive to my finish point for the day and I'll swim back to my start point. And then at least the waves will be behind me. So I was like, is that cheating? He was like, no, you're still doing the Ks. He's like, <laughs> yeah. this, he's like the water's atrocious. So it's like, you've already swum 10 Ks because you've just been pushed back every time you're um, swimming. So we drove up to Sandingham and we hopped in the water and we started swimming. And my brother, this is this is how choppy it was. My brother was on the back of the jet ski, being my nutrition person, my fuel person, handing me the food. And um, I climbed on for one of my fuel breaks and my dad started handing me the stuff. And I was like, oh, what's going on? And he's like, your brother's been seasick for the last 30 minutes. He's over the <laughs> side of the jet ski throwing up. And I was like, I used, it was it almost made me laugh so much because someone else was in pain. And I was like, I'm so sorry. Like I've still got two hours to go. for something. I was like, you're going to have to sit on the back of this jet ski for two hours feeling seasick. Oh, no. So he was on the back. My dad was trying to watch me, watch the waves so the jet ski didn't roll, make sure my brother didn't fall off the back when he was leaning over the side vomiting. And it was just an absolute mess out there. I don't know. I don't, when I think back to it, I'm like, I don't know how we survived that. Like we should have been headed towards Tasmania or something that's pushed away. Like it was, it was so messy. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, I saw the, uh, the video of you maybe getting out that day uh, at the end of it, like you might have post, your mum might have posted that yeah. on Facebook and it was like, it, it is the, some of the worst conditions I've ever seen down in the Bay. Um, it was, it was horrendous. And, Actually, it was that day or the next day, so the next day when you um, had to postpone, that there was people surfing at St Kilda. I saw yeah. footage of people surfing at St Kilda, <laughs> uh, which, which is normally pretty flat. You know, there's nothing. Um, but, yeah, the wind was just that bad. And so the, the next day you woke up um, oh, and yeah. I was what, what happened in, then? I was so angry. We were staying in Brighton and mum and dad woke up to go put the cars in, like, the different, like, the start point, the finish point, so we could get everywhere and um they went up to my start point for the day and they came back to the hotel room woke me up and they're like look you're gonna have to postpone the swim and I was fuming I was like excuse me I was like this is my last day I was like I don't care what the conditions are I was like put me in the water mum and dad looking at me like no way like we we can't actually do it it's gonna like the jet ski is gonna roll or you're gonna get <laughs> like just pushed away and I was like no I was like put me in the water and then as I was saying it dad got like a weather warning on his phone for lightning in the bay and I was like oh. and he's like we cannot hop in the water when there's lightning I was like I know but I just I was like surely I can swim like late in the day they're like no I'm sorry but you're gonna have to wait for tomorrow and that was like so like oh I felt so angry and just frustrated because I was like I've just been looking forward to this last day like it was gonna be the end of it I was gonna finish and um yeah he was like no nah, sorry we have to stop now I was like oh damn <laughs> so what did you do to kill time and occupy yourself we ended up coming home and that was probably actually a blessing because I got food into me that day I was because I wasn't getting into the water I wasn't exerting myself I wasn't tired um we came home and I ate a lot of fruit for the next day because I didn't realize it because it was raining all that day 
the water in the temp of, in the bay had dropped like maybe two or three degrees um because I hopped back in the next day um down at Sandringham and it was so icy like the water around my head I was like thank goodness I have food in me like I have no idea yeah. how I've gotten through this if I didn't have anything um yeah in me and I'm pretty sure the water quality was quite bad I came out of the water with like brown around my face and dad like, oh jeez mom and dad were like oh like maybe we shouldn't check to see what the water quality is we'll just hope that your immune system kills this yeah it's probably a good thing the um I can't remember who does it. It's not the EPA, but they they do a um, water quality report up until the end of like maybe March or the end of like Feb or something. So I don't know if they're still doing it then. Yeah, I have no idea, but we it. didn't check anyway, just in case it was like really bad. And then mom and dad were like, maybe we shouldn't put you in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just don't look at it. That's what yeah. I've done. If, if we've ever had a swim, like I just never factor in the uh, the water yeah. quality. That was like if there's been rain, it's going to be gross. <laughs> yeah, I was like to dad, I was like, this week, I don't really want to know the wind. I don't want to know the rain. I don't want to know the water quality. I just want to get from point A to point B every day. And that's all I need to do. <laughs> and what was um, what was uh, different about the swim than what you expected going in? Um, I think I didn't realize how um, how much internal motivation I had to have because I was like, oh, like, I'll pop my head up every hour and talk to someone. And every three hours I get in the boat and I'll talk to someone. I was like, this is going to be like a breeze. I'll be fine. But I didn't realize that my head was going to be down in water for six to seven hours a day. And I had my own thoughts to deal with for that whole time. Like even though I had company swimming, you can't talk to each other. Not like when you go for a ride or mm-hmm. a run with someone, you're with your own thoughts no matter what. And you have to like deal with everything that comes into your head and sometimes it was really deep thoughts and then sometimes it was literally just like one two three one two three and it was just like (laughs) counting in my head because I was like what else am I gonna do um but then sometimes I was like I think my my brother showed me this open water swimmer that did like 100 k's in 12 hours or something like that with a really good tide and I was like and when I was swimming along and I was I think it was like day four or something. I was like, I was like, I'm, I, I'm not one of these open water swimmers. Like, why are you doing this? Like, you're just fooling yourself. There's no way you can actually do this. And then as soon as I thought started to pop in my head, that's when I started to get cold. It's like when I started to hurt, my arms hurt more. And I was like, okay, you really need to block these thoughts out. And you just have to become more like, yeah, this is, this is easy. Like, oh, what's, what's just swimming? You're just swinging your arms over for seven hours. Like you can do that. What a, what a breeze. <laughs> So yeah. yeah, it became very like one thought or the other. When I was really tired, I could only count or I could only play a game in my head. Um, so yeah, it was even my own thoughts. I would, on my, when I used to go to school, I would catch a bus every morning and I had a bus route that had 16 stops on it. And I would try to remember each stop that we went to. And then I would also try and list each person that hopped on at the different stops and because I went from year five to year 12 to that school, so many people changed. So I was swimming along and I was like, okay, yeah, this, this person hops on here and then that person hops on there. And it really it made three Ks go so quick. And I was like, oh, like <laughs> break time. Like that's awesome. Whereas other times I was like, how has five minutes gone by? Like that took forever just to get one K done. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. That, that, that's one of the hardest things I find about, um, about long distance swimming. And like I'm... Um, done a whole lot of it but whenever it, I've had those big sessions we might be you know eight ten um, or like uh, 15k like open water swim. it's like yeah it's just being in your own head um, yeah. is, is it's a long time to spend there and, um, and just to <laughs> oc- occupy your mind for that for that long can be um, difficult I found it it was okay uh, when it was good conditions and I was swimming next to someone and it was yeah. nice and I could appreciate the view and the, and, and the warm weather and all of that. But you, had, you didn't have any of that apart from the first day. Yeah. Um, so it's just when it's just a grind, that is, that's really hard to, um, to put up with. So um, what did you, with your, with your thoughts, like um, what did you tell yourself when you were going into, um, into those deeper thoughts or when you're being negative about what you, you know, told yourself, I'm not one of those distance swimmers, that sort of thing. Yeah, I kind of... Um... I started to think kind of more that this was going to be an 80% mental thing and 20% physical. Cause when I hopped in the water, my partner was like, Oh, have you done like a 10 K of water swim before? And I was like, no, like, this is like my first time I'm going to do 20 K is like, whatever. 
And then when I got into my own thoughts, I was like, wow, I was like, okay, maybe you're not meant to be here. And then as soon as I started to think those, I was like, I was like, no, you're going to do this for a reason. Like you, you're going to swim this for a reason. I was like, every time I take a stroke, like I've, I kind of started to think more that there's like a comfort zone around everyone. And each time I took a stroke to get further into my swim, I was like, my comfort zone is just growing and I'm getting bigger. And like everything I do here is going to make me grow in some way or the other. And yeah, like those dark thoughts, it was insane how when those happened, my swimming slowed down. Um, I found it harder. I got colder. My arms hurt more. I felt rashes on my body more. Whereas then all of a sudden I started to imagine myself. Um, it was kind of like I imagined myself swimming with my past selves. It was very weird. I, I think I got, went a little bit too loopy in my head. Um, I all of a sudden started thinking about nine-year-old Holly when she first started swimming and how I'd swim up and down the pool and I was so keen just to swim anywhere. And I would imagine her swimming next to me and I would have like a conversation almost with her. And then I would have 16 year old Holly who did the river swim saying that like, Oh, like, come on, you really think that you're as fast as me. And I would always like race myself. It was very weird. <laughs> and then I would have like my 18 year old self who was in year 12, who didn't really swim going, wow, like you've actually done really well to still be swimming now. So I had like, yeah, these past selves of me kind of swimming, which was really weird. But then also the mental thing was kind of funny because I had so many great comments coming through like, oh, you're amazing. Like you've done so much, like blah, blah, blah. Um, it almost gave me like this emotional side and it made me kind of like care and in a weird way. Like I felt all of a sudden like emotional. I was like, oh, people really care about me. Like that's so sweet. And then as soon as those caring thoughts came in, I, um, I kind of had to shut them down because then I was like, oh, like I kind of felt soft in the inside in a weird way. I was like to mom and dad, I was like, is it bad that I don't read these comments? I was like, I can't read them because as soon as I read them, I start to care and I start to feel emotional. And then if I feel emotional, I don't want to swim because I just want to be comfortable in a bed in warmth. Um, so I kind of had to become like this animal kind of thing where I don't have human emotions. I just have swimming, eating, sleeping, and that's all I'm going to be doing. So yeah, I really had to like block those bits out and be like, no, you're just, you're here to swim. You're not here to talk to anyone. It's no external motivation, just become very internal to yourself. And um, yeah, whatever thought you have, you're just going to deal with it. You're going to mail on it and then you're going to let it pass. And that's going to have to happen for seven hours a day, every day. Yeah. Oh, thanks for, um, thanks for bringing that up and uh, and being willing to to share it because uh, like those, those thoughts, I think, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people who have done maybe something similar to you have have thought about them and uh, but maybe not express them uh, because yeah. it's like this is a bit weird you know maybe I'm the only one who uh, I've never swum to um, next to past versions of myself but uh, like I, I know with the um, like with those comments and that sort of thing it's um, like that can distract from what you're actually doing in a yeah. way and it's like it's good to get it at the end uh, afterwards but not while you're still going, like it doesn't, sometimes it just doesn't really help because it's, yeah, it just takes you out of the, out of the moment a little bit. Yeah. And I um, said that to mom and dad, I was like, am I a bad person that I don't want to read these that I'm not replying? I was like, I feel like I'm a bad person because everyone's so sweet and all the messages are so kind. And normally if I read them, I'd be like, thank you so much. But in that yeah. weird five days, it was like this little blip of my life when just nothing mattered. And like my head was like the only thing that I was in like even conversations I would just kind of blank out of and I was like no I'm like I'm in this complete different world for myself and I was like to my mom, I was like I just can't read them because as soon as I start reading them I feel like emotional and then I want to be in home in bed in a warm comfy environment and I don't want to get back into that ocean whereas yeah getting into the ocean and swimming for seven hours five days a week is just it's not kind of human like you're not meant to really do that and your mind's not really meant to be doing that so I was like, I have to become non-human kind of experience. Yeah, no, I think it's like, um, like you, you're there, but you're not actually like looking out at the world in a yeah. way. And like, I, I remember being, um, this is at the, um, like, yes, it was start line of um, the Ironman and then similar for the Rottnestum as well. It was kind of like you know, beforehand, it's like everyone, people saying, yeah, good luck and all that sort of stuff. And it's like, yep, yeah, thanks. But you're not really taking it in. You're just yeah. like your head's in a different spot. Yeah. Um, but you, yeah, you need to do it. Otherwise, you're um, you, 
you get distracted, you get emotional about stuff and yeah. you think too much about the task task ahead. It's like, no, you've just got to get yourself into the zone and just like, yeah, you're looking out there, but you're actually switching off from all of it really. Yeah. And you're like, I can't hear anything and I can't see anything, but like the first thing that I have to do. And I feel like that freaked me out day two. I, I hopped in the water and I was like, oh my God, like this is, this is so painful. Like my arms are so sore. I was like, you're not even halfway today. Like you tomorrow, like today's not even going to be halfway yet. You still got so much longer to go. And as I was swimming along, I was like, in a, it's not like, it sounds very morbid, but everything comes to an end as even though that sounds really sad and depressing, things come to an end and no matter what that day was going to come to an end and that swim leg was going to come to an end. And I just had to get there one way or another. And I feel like now, ever since coming back, now I think that all the time I'm like this assignment will end or this work shift will end everything's going to end at some point it's just how you're going to get there and how you're going to occupy yourself for that small tiny little time of like I felt like day two was never going to end and now it's been two weeks since that swim had even happened and I was like wow it's over now like everything's going to stop the pain's going to stop you're going to heal you're going to get better and I was just like wow like yeah, okay, you can do this then. Like one way or the another, you're going to end up in bed tonight and it's going to be fine. <laughs> yeah, geez, that's a that's a good approach to it. And yeah. Um, yeah, really mature approach to it as, as well, which is, um, yeah, which, which is fantastic because it's, um, it is you just got to do what you have to do to get to, get to the end of the day. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, I'm looking at, um, uh, have you seen the Iron, Iron Cowboy? Have you seen... Oh. Um, Yes, Thanks my Lawrence. family loves all that stuff that, <laughs> yeah. that I grew up with in my house. <laughs> so like seeing him, I don't know, he's up to 55, maybe 55 um, Iron Man's in 55 days so far. Like um, that is that is interesting to like yeah. to imagine what he might be going through um, to get through every day and then knowing you've only got a couple hours sleep a night and oh. then do it all over over again. So uh, but that kind of approach that you um that you mentioned, it's yeah, it's just these little mental things that you've got to um you've got to use yeah and I was even talking to my dad because he's got an Ironman event happening in June and I was like just remember all this training you're doing it's gonna end at one point I was like even when you're think when you're in the middle of the race think back to like a training session that is so hard and you're like well that ended eventually like when we did our hundred hundreds in the pool I was like at number 70 I was like this is never gonna end like this is ridiculous and then I was doing the ocean swim I was like wow that was in December like that was ages ago we've I finished that that finished that day finished that pain finished so this pain will also finish one way <laughs> yeah yeah so that's yeah, right like, this this can't be too bad everything as yeah as I keep saying to everyone it sounds so morbid when you say everything's gonna end but it's also kind of a thing that can help you get through different challenges like you will be able to get through this one point yeah yeah absolutely and it makes you appreciate things a whole lot more um as well and like this this year too with like the uh, well last year we spent so much more time at home because we weren't traveling and all that sort of stuff and yeah um and my kids were two and four then and they're nearly a year older and it's just like well, you're not going to get this time back so um it certainly helps you um change your approach to to things it's like i want to spend a bit more time with the with the kids and um and doing the things that i really want to do so it's just you know you don't um you don't uh yeah, you kind of filter out what's what's actually important to you that way. And I think um, with the stuff that um, you're doing, have you found that you've leveled up a bit with uh, what you think is is possible? Because I remember when I first started um, running, which I, I started to do probably when I was 19, 20, I, you know, like a 5K would be like, well, it was pretty good, you know, 6 and 6K. <laughs> um, but, you know, then just as I've done more and I've, I've, I've done some bigger weeks, like over lockdown, did a 98 or 97k week which i would have never thought possible before but it's yeah. just like in your mind you just start to level up and you start to get more comfortable with bigger distances and it's the same thing swimming as well have you found that that's been the case over the last like six years or so yeah when i was i remember when i was competitive swimming so i used to swim mainly in the pool and do all that type of stuff um, when a coach would write up on the board that we're going to do a 5k set, I was like, oh my God, this is going to hurt so much. Like yeah. I'm going to be exhausted. There's no way I can get through 5k's. And now if I see a 5k set, I'm like, oh, like that's okay. Like you can do that easily. It's going to take like an hour or so. Um, but then it's funny because now if I saw a like 10k set, 
like in my mind now I'd still be like a little bit like oh whoa like that's pretty far whereas then if I keep swimming like this then maybe one time I'm going to look at the 10k swim and be like oh that's that's an easy training day like whatever like you can do that and it was funny because I because I've never the longest I'd swam in the ocean straight before I did the swim was I think maybe 8k or something like that like it wasn't far at all and um and when dad went mentioned to me like a year or two ago he's like oh do like the 10k Williamtown swim and I was like 10k is no way I can't swim 10ks in the ocean I was like that's ridiculous and he was like oh I'll give it a try I was like no way not I can never swim 10ks in the ocean and then yeah I skipped 10ks and went straight to 20ks and I was like oh 10ks is easy now like I can go ten, do 10ks next year like whatever um so yeah it's funny that all of a sudden I was watching this video about how your everyone has this little comfort zone circle around them and each time you do something outside of that it just grows bigger and bigger and I feel like during COVID and lockdown everyone's kind of comfort zone or circle shrunk so much more because we didn't go out we didn't see people we didn't exercise as much we didn't really do anything that was a bit uncomfortable whereas after that swim I feel like my like things that I can put inside my comfort zone is so much more like I could be like yeah I can do a 21k run it's not going to hurt that much I'm not running for seven hours or I'm being like yeah I can go out and ride for five hours I don't mind that anymore like everything is going to be fine like you, you know what you can do you know what your mind can do and you know how to sit in your mind for seven hours a day so yeah I'm almost like yeah that's fine <laughs> what's the worst that can happen yeah I, I, I find a lot of enjoyment in in expanding that comfort zone as well. I, yeah. When I first started running clinics, I I mean, I was, I consider it young, um, but I was 20, uh, first one I did, I was probably 25 and we had probably a dozen people there and I'd never run any before. And so I was like, had to come up with the whole thing. And, um, and I was so nervous going into it and like I'd planned it yeah, meticulously for the, yeah. the whole week before it. And I was just so nervous about the whole, the whole thing. And it went okay. Uh, I don't think it was, it was amazing, but <laughs> it was like, you know, it really gave me the sweats just before it because, and I was presenting to, to adults. Yeah. You know, a lot of them were in their forties and fifties and I had this complex. So it's like, why would they want to listen to me? Like they probably know more about it than, than I do. Um, but you know, you, you do it enough times and then you just get comfortable speaking to people and delivering in front of, um, you know, bigger groups and that sort of thing. And we had uh, clinics in New Zealand uh, probably two years ago now. And there was, uh, I think they were like pretty sort of big group clinics of maybe 30 or 40 swimmers each. And um, and we had like three of those in a day. So over the course, there's like hundred and something people at these these clinics. And um, and like, it was, it was awesome. Like it just got a lot of energy from it. And just for me personally as well, like it felt great to be able to, do that in front of so many people and yeah I was a bit nervous that you always get that if there's there's bigger groups um, but I, I really enjoy that that part of just trying to get better and and grow as a person and I've had a, a similar thing surfing so last Friday there was really big swell and I went in the probably the biggest waves I've been and like on the face it was 12 foot pretty easily um, and it was out there but it's just like if you focus on your breathing and I was yeah I've, I've sort of been watching there's a surf coach that I really like. And he's talked about this. It's like, don't spend all your energy paddling out. Just like, just relax. You know, you'll eventually get out there. The water will sort of make its way through and you'll get out there. And, um, and then you just got to focus on your breathing and like, just as you're paddling into a wave, you've got to relax. It's so very similar to swimming. Like if, as soon as you're trying to muscle it and you're tense, like you're just, you're not going to move well or perform well. Yeah. So um, yeah. And then yeah, after that, I feel like, all right, I'm comfortable here and uh, yeah, I can start to, start to do more with it and it's uh yeah it's learning about those things and kind of getting the skills and the education around what is it required to go to the next level with it that is that's all part of the the journey and for you you know what how have you how have you found the last couple weeks in that the post race where um you know things have quietened down you go back to normal life you haven't been in the pool um yet because of an ear infection so how's that been for you on the on the come down yeah it was it was quite um weird because I I kind of came back and then had to hop straight back into uni assignments and working and different things like that and I'm one of those people that normally drives around with like loud music like singing in the car and stuff like that and I almost just kind of like had no music turned everything down because I just, it's like I almost couldn't handle the noise again like I was like no like I've got time to think like I want to think again 
I was like, no, maybe I'm not done with, you know, having my own thoughts kind of thing. And um, yeah, and it was kind of weird when like, I was talking to mom and dad and they're like, is it weird to kind of go straight back into life and everyone else has just been going around doing the same thing like they normally do and you've mm. just come out of the ocean after spending five days long? I was like, yeah, because I don't really know how to explain like when people asked how did the swim go, I, I was a bit like, oh, good. Like I didn't know how to put five days into words and like all the thoughts that went through my yeah. head. And, and they'll never and understand it either. No one yeah, will understand what you went really, through. Yeah, I just couldn't really voice what it actually was. And they're like, oh, do you feel different? And I was like, yeah, but I can't really explain why I feel different. I just do. Like everything is just a little bit off to what it normally felt like beforehand. And I just kind of in my own head, I felt like a bit more like, yeah, I can do anything. Like this is, everything's easy. Like, and it was kind of bad because my mom and dad were like, you have to make sure that you're not harsh with people because you've experienced something that's changed you, but <laughs> other people haven't. So you have to make sure that you're still like, oh, I understand you and stuff like that. Like you can't be harsh with people, be still understanding. I was like, okay, I remember I got to get out of this like animal kind of mindset and be back to a human being when I'm like, have empathy and I care for people. I was like, I've completely forgot that that's what I have to do in normal day-to-day -day life. So yeah, I kind of came back and it took me like two or three days of just kind of being this weird, like kind of zombie person walking around, like not really engaging too well. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, I slowly snapped back into it and I was like, this is how you socialize with people again. <laughs> like this is how you're <laughs> going to talk to them. <laughs> yeah. So, I yeah, think it's been very weird. <laughs> It's, I think part of it's you're, you're in your own head that long and you need to, um, and you need to think only about yourself to be able to get through it. And mm -hmm. so it takes a few days to transition to being a social person yeah. um, again. And also like, I, I think as well for me, you know, after you do something big you, in the back of your mind, you're kind of like, you guys don't know what I've done. And like, yeah, you, know, you, you feel a bit superior. You feel like, you know, you're, you're above everyone else in a way. And, um, and yeah, and so you've some sometimes got this um, attitude or this this presence about you where you're better than everyone else, uh, and so it's about yeah, you know, just like hang on a second, <laughs> let's come back to uh, down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, 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 and it, especially for you, you know, you with the event that you did across the five days, you finish your swim at you know, two o'clock in the afternoon, go and get some some food. You might go to the cafe. People are having their lattes and all of that, and yeah. it's like you have no idea what I've just been through, do you? Yeah, <laughs> they just yeah, don't. Or like when I climbed it. out of the water day four and we went to a cafe to warm me up, I looked like, like I actually looked like a sea monster. My hair was <laughs> everywhere. I had goggle marks, I capped hand lines. I looked like a mess and I was sitting in this like busy cafe on a Saturday <laughs> morning where everyone's, you know, out having smashed up powder and a latte. And I was sitting there and I feel like people were just looking at me because I just looked like a mess. And I was like, <laughs> I was kind of like, I don't even care what I look like right now. Like, I just don't want to get back to <laughs> that. And you're just going to have to deal with this. And I just did. I had weird people kind of like looking at me and I was like, if only you knew the pain I've been through. Homeless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not homeless. <laughs> I can pay for this food. I was kind of like, if only you know what I've just been experiencing for the last two hours, then you'll understand why I look the way I look. <laughs> yeah so that's I right kind of, and I was but I was my in my own head like beforehand I would kind of be like oh like oh, I'm so judged like I look so terrible and all that stuff and I in my head I was like I don't care like there's not a single part because there's bigger things in my head right now than what I look mm -hmm. like when I'm out eating breakfast like I have to get back in some three hours for like in some torrential water so I was like, I don't care if you think I look terrible. <laughs> I've got bigger things going on in my own head. Yeah, yeah. It's a good point to get to though. Like I found that that changed a lot for me after, um, uh, probably after having um, kids more than anything. Whereas like I you're always going to come up with like, you know, food and stains and stuff on your clothes and you're going to look tired. You're going to, you're going to feel like crap. And so it was just, for me, it was like, I just don't care what anyone thinks you know if i'm going yeah. down the street and there's like yeah you know, you, you're dirty and all of that sort of yeah. stuff um and then it's the same thing as well like i'll find that after after surfing or after swimming like in the the ocean like there's been times where i've gone into supermarkets or into cafes and i've been swimming in the ocean or, or surfing and i've got like what feels like a liter of water up my nose or in, in my head and you go to lean over and it comes you get that and nose like, waterfall. Oh, don't judge me i swear yeah. <laughs> but it's funny because i feel like for a lot of, when I was in school, 
I there wasn't many people that were really like many girls that were really into sports like after year 10 or 11 I think I was the only one who's actually doing a sport and I feel like everyone stopped because of that judgment they felt from other people whereas I was turning up to school stinking like chlorine with wet hair and <laughs> looking like a mess so I think because I went through most of high school like that I wasn't I don't get too phased in life anymore I don't feel like if people were judging me I'm like that's was fine like I'm used to it now I've had people mm. you know sitting in the classroom going oh what the hell smells like the pool in here I'm like yeah that's me every <laughs> year like sorry I was in the pool for two hours this morning whereas then yeah I feel like sometimes it happens with boys but I feel like it's more with girls we often stop after year 10 11 because we just feel like we're judged too much whereas I wish like even now when I'm coaching girls around the age that I was when people stopped swimming I'm like no keep going like keep pushing mm-hmm. through this I was like it's gonna suck at school and people are gonna look at you weirdly especially because a lot of people think it's quite unladylike to be very competitive and I was the person that was like I'm gonna beat all the boys like I don't want to race the mm-hmm. girls I want to I want to race the boys in the squad and at school I was like and I'm gonna beat them all like I don't care and um like that competitive that my family and I, we compete doing the dishes. Like I was raised in a very competitive household. Um, so yeah. And then I'm now coaching all these girls. And I'm like, no, keep pushing through that. Like you can, you can become a really amazing swimmer or an amazing soccer player or netballer. I was like, if you just get over that kind of like, oh, I'm being judged kind of phase and just remember that it doesn't matter what people actually think it's going on as long as in your head you're happy and you're happy doing your sport I was like then there's no reason for you to stop it yet yeah yeah it'd be it'd be good if you could just show um show like kids in year nine year 10 year 11 and and a bit of 12 as well but just show them what they will feel like in after school in like the first year of university or the first year after school it's just like people don't care like all that social all those social (laughs) dynamics of school are irrelevant and the kids that were bullies are the ones that don't go anywhere the, yeah. yeah and you know the, the ones that have success are, are probably the ones who are either getting getting teased or you know smelling like chlorine it's <laughs> uh it's yeah things just do not matter after school so it's good that it, especially if you know, you're coming from someone like yourself that's you know a couple of years out of school um and you're doing things like you're doing like that's a it's a good message for them to receive from someone like you um and not their mum and dad because they're not going to get that message from mum yeah, and dad when when mum and dad say, say to you oh don't worry what kids think of you you're like okay you've forgotten completely what high school is like whereas yes. I, I don't know like if you find the right group of friends in school they don't care that you you know you stink like chlorine or that you're sweaty because you've just come from soccer training like no one cares about that and even when I left high school and I went to uni, I found an amazing group of friends that have all experienced sport and all like are playing sport. So we get along so well. And I was like, okay, I've really found my people now. Like we're all, we will understand the same thing together. I don't have to be like, oh yeah. Like I was up in the morning and then have to explain why I like to get up at 4.30 AM to train. Cause no one at school really understood They're like, oh, why don't you just sleep in if you're tired? I'm like, no, it's, I can't just sleep in. I want to swim. <laughs> like there's yeah. And it was just very interesting in school. I was like, no, I have to, I want to get up at 4.30. I want to swim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the good things that my, my dad did because he was my coach um, for the majority of high school was that he would let the people let the kids know in the morning like how many of your friends are getting up at this time and yeah. doing any form of exercise and are doing that well yeah seven eight times a week probably none of them and um so like i think uh and there's i'm reading a book um now that's escaped me it's about this it's a, it's a parenting book it's called the no I'm not, i've forgotten it but it's basically one of the one of the first things it talks about is if you tell your kid that they're they're special or they're talented and that you praise them for that, then it's going to lead to them not actually trying. But if you maybe make them feel special because of the effort and the work that they put in, that's what's going to make them want to do that more and then pursue that thing. And so I think it's very much about, um, it was very much about, yeah, you're a special person because you're choosing to get up and because you're coming training and you're putting in all this, this hard work, not because of you're just amazing because of who you are. So I know you've got to actually do something about it. And not just because of your achievements, like that's like when I used to come home with, and because I think I had that always in my head, like, no, it's not just about placing and it's not about winning or coming third. It's about like improving myself. And I would come home and um, like people would be like, oh, did you win on the weekend? I'd be like, yeah, like 
yeah, I came first, but like, I didn't get a PB and I didn't get this time. And they didn't almost understand it. Like, yeah, but you won. I'm like, like inside I didn't win because I want to achieve more. Like I want to become more successful. And they, and it was very hard to kind of, yeah, relate to people at school. I was like, oh, don't worry. Like I'll talk to my family when I get home about this. Like they all understand what I'm trying to talk about. Whereas, yeah, yeah, it always kind of, it did in year 11 and 12, I did start to feel quite lonely. I was like, nobody really understands actually what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to achieve. Like they only just kind of look at me like, why? If you're tired, sleep in or don't worry about like, oh, you can come to the party, just train like another day. And I was like, no, I, I have to train. I have to wake up. It's just, it's part of my life now. There's no way I'm stopping it yet. <laughs> yeah. And that, um, that sort of a feeling about those things is, it's kind of something that I hope my uh, kids have got when they're going through school. Like I, for me, you know, I missed, I didn't go to a heap of parties uh, because of training and that sort of thing. Yeah. I did, didn't miss out. Like I still went to some parties and things like that, but um, like, it's just, yeah, I'm, and I'm glad I didn't like, I did not miss out on anything apart from a bit of trouble, I think. So yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, and um, that. yeah, yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Like um, yeah, you're much better off having, you like you've got to stay stay busy and, and have something to to do so it's um I think you, yeah that photo that your mum and dad posted at the end of the uh the swim was just like that was that was a great shot you know just of, yeah. of the family um and like probably a pretty emotional six days that you you went through <laughs> together um but the fact you're able to do it as a as a family uh that I'm sure they'd be so excited about and um and just so so proud of as well and um yeah congratulations on on the swim and um it was just it was great to see you you do it and i was you know seeing it through the facebook pictures and it's like okay it's uh it looks rough but like i've got no idea what you're what you're going through yeah, it's like I, I know what it's like when it's rough but it's it's a different thing mom was filming there. it at one stage and i was like it feels choppier than it looks on that phone. I was like, are you sure you filmed that right? Like, did you do something with that video? I was like, it looks, it, it's so much worse in that water than what it looks like on that phone. And I was even looking back at some of the footage and I was like, I was like, wow, I feel like a sook for complaining. I was like, it doesn't look that bad on the phone. And then I was like, no, it was bad. Okay. Like you're getting mouthfuls of the ocean water. Like, <laughs> like it was bad, but um, yeah, it was, it was interesting because people still, I don't think fully realized that like it was um mother nature just did not want me to finish that 100ks it was like like you think this is gonna like because I, I was I finished the first two days I was like this is gonna be easy hmm. mother nature decided to be like aha very funny have fun with this weather now <laughs> let's see how you go with this yeah how do you feel looking back at it now though are you uh are you grateful that it was tough and you managed to push through it or looking back would you go actually it would have been still pretty nice if it had been five days of just sunshine and calm waters I look back on it and I'm like of course like it'd be so much easier and it would have been so much greater to have it just so smooth but I feel like the swim wouldn't have been the swim that I did if it wasn't choppy like that mm. the messy water and the conditions made um it's kind of like made me so much stronger in the head than what it, just swimming flat water would have because I had to be um had to become very determined in my own head to be like I am doing this I don't care what's going to happen in the water I have to get in this water and do this um and if it was calm each day it would have been a breeze to hop in and I feel like I would have started to complain about more things like it would have been like oh my arms are sore and my neck hurts whereas I almost didn't want to complain because I was like I was like no I have to be positive I had the people I complain people are going to be like just hop out of the water it's shocking conditions anyway so I really internalized it and I was like, no, like no complaining. These, these days are just going to have to get it done. Um, whereas, yeah, if it was calm water, it just wouldn't have been the same type of swim. It would have been almost too easy. <laughs> I might actually start thinking about a new swim by now, but at the moment I'm like, no more swims right now. <laughs> I have to get over that one. It's like a bad hangover. I just have to forget it before I think about a new one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, soon enough you'll get the uh, the urge to have another drink or have another swim. So yeah, yeah. I feel like that. Yeah, I'm like maybe we'll give like like another four years or so, like I did with my last swim, and then I'll completely forget the pain that I went through, <laughs> and I'll be like, hey, this is a new idea. We're swimming this far this time, and I feel like my mum and dad will roll their eyes again and be like, okay, let's go. <laughs> Here we go again. Yeah, go yeah. Again. I've got no doubt that you'll forget how much pain it was. Oh yeah, in. I'll think it's a great idea again. Whereas I hopped out of day two or day three or something and I looked at my parents I was like next time I come up with an idea like this 
just remind me that I'm in pain right now. <laughs> remind me how much pain this was. I was like, and maybe tell me no. Whereas I feel like I'll talk them out of it again. I'll be like, no, 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 I'll be fine this time. I swear I'll train, yeah, train more and I'll, I'll prepare better and I'll eat more food and <laughs> yeah, everything like that. <laughs> That's the first thing I said to um, my wife when I finished Ironman. I it was never let me do that again. Yeah. <laughs> very weird. Like, you know, I'd get the, yeah. Yeah. All these endurance athletes, I see them all the time because we, like the stories in their house that we grew up with was always about endurance athletes. The things we watch on the TV is like about Elliot Kipchoge breaking two hours. Like that's the type of stuff that is happening in our house. And we talk and we praise these endurance athletes so much that I think because we praise them so much in our house, I was like, I want to be like them. <laughs> like, these are our idols. This is my mom and dad. This is who they talk about. I was like, I want to be like those people. So I think that I was like, if they can do it, I can do it. Like, whatever, we'll get in the water and do it. And um, yeah, I've, I've, yeah, I think I'm going to have to forget about this before I think of doing anything else again. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's a, it's a huge effort. So um, thanks for jumping on the podcast and uh, giving us a small insight into uh, what you actually went through uh, on <laughs> the day. You. And I, I think what I'll um, do here as well is I'll get some of those those photos and those videos and um, and put them into this video as well so people have a, a bit of an idea. And then maybe we'll just uh, see if we can amplify the, the waves and the chop by 20% to what it was actually like there. Yeah. Because uh, it's like when I'm filming the surf with my phone or with, like with the GoPro, it's like I swear yeah, it's it's so much bigger <laughs> when you're actually actually in it. But um, yeah, no, I saw that video on day four and and thought, oh my god, I can't believe that you was the worst that, so. day. I think I got I like literally body surfed into that beach and my cap and my goggles came flying off. So I came out of the water with my cap and goggles off. Mum and dad are like, "Well, we're we really ready for the camera." I was like, "No, I just got smashed by a wave. My cap and <laughs> goggles came flying off my head." And I was just trying to get into the ocean. I was like, wow, the ocean is trying to kill me today. Like, just get out, get home. Yeah, oh, I reckon. So that, that'd be a good video to, uh, to put in yeah. there. <laughs> so, um, thanks for being on the podcast, Hull. And uh, yeah, congratulations again. Thank you.